What's up guys, it's Richard here from Carnage and today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Noontech A9 Smart TV box. So starting off down the bottom here we see we've got some features so we'll quickly run through those. It's running the Android 2.3 operating system, we've got access to the Android market, support for Flash, you can browse, play games, write blogs, you can shop, watch movies, video chat, HDMI support and also built in Wi-Fi support as well. So let's open up the box and take a look at what came inside. Starting off, we obviously have the power supply for the unit. We've got our yellow, white and red audio video cables. We've also got a USB to mini USB cable. So this is actually for charging the wireless keyboard that comes with the unit. So you can see this is a QWERTY keyboard. We've got some special function buttons as well that you can access using the blue FN button just down the bottom there. We've also got a trackpad on this side so you can pretty much use it as you would a normal mouse on the computer. I've also got left right mouse buttons and we've also got it up here as well so it's kind of in a handy spot. Um, having a quick look over the unit, you can actually see that this has a flashlight on it as well. So if you're watching anything in the dark and you need to look for something, you can just use that flashlight pretty handy. So it is also wireless, so if you flip this out, as you can see we've got a little USB receiver dongle there. And if you're not going to be using it, you can just put it back in, secure that in there, and you know you're not going to lose it. Also comes with a smaller remote, as you can see it's pretty basic functionality. I've got a directionals, OK, volume, home screen, back, power. Um, so it's full if you're going to be watching movies and listening to music and all that, um, but if you're going to be using some of the more advanced features like browsing the internet, it's kind of painful having to use the on-screen keyboard and manually go through it like that. Lastly, we have the unit itself, so let's do a quick overview of this. Obviously, as you can see, this is a shiny black unit here. On the top, we've got our power button, and that actually illuminates red when it's on standby and blue when it's in use. On the front here, it's got a little label saying Smart TV Box, and we've got our normal remotes IR sensor there. On this side, we've just got a couple of vents here to keep it nice and cool on the inside, and out the back, we find all our inputs and outputs. So on the left, obviously, we've got our power here, audio video there, we've got our SPDIF optical audio out, HDMI port, 10 100 Ethernet port, USB host port, and a device, so you can actually plug this in using a similar uh, style USB cable to printers, so you can just plug it into your computer there. On this side we've also got another USB host port there, as well as our SD and MMC memory card slot. So let's plug it in and take a look at the interface. So for those of you who use the Android operating system on the phone, this is going to be an extremely familiar interface. As you can see, I've already started to customise it a bit. We've got a background and some apps that I downloaded from the market and placed onto the desktop. These are the apps that came built in with the media player video, so any uh, portable hard drives or thumb drives that you plugged in over the USB ports, uh, you can browse through them and play them in there. Music, so you can browse through artists, albums, songs, and uh, play them through there as well. And gallery, which is for images, and this is the market. So this is the same marketplace that you would see on an Android phone, and you can browse through uh, apps, books, games, and top ones in the shop and all that and you've got the same filters as well top paid top free etc so this is the default browser that comes with the media player uh, I'll just give you a quick idea of how simple it is to do a quick Google search and just browsing the net in general is uh, pretty easy when you're using the wireless keyboard another cool thing as well is that using the FN button and moving up and down on the trackpad it actually allows you to emulate a scroll um, that you would be using with a normal mouse scroll wheel. Let's just do a quick search for Nuntech A9. And we can just scroll up and down the page like that. So we'll have a quick look through the settings. Uh, wireless networks is where you can configure your wireless and Ethernet settings. Notifications, uh, so this is what brings up anything so with your Gmail or Google accounts and you can also access it um, from the top of the screen up here as well. So for instance if you're on the home screen you want to check if you've got any new emails you can just drag it down as such. A display, so you've got animation, screen scale settings, USB applications, flick through the rest of them there. Accounts and Syncs, this is where you set up any Google accounts that you have on the media player. In here we've got all the apps, so as you can see I've already downloaded quite a, a few of them and some of them actually did come installed on the media player as well. And I'll show you 
Angry Birds, which does work quite well. Uh, it's probably one of the most popular games on Android and iPhone, so I'll just give you a quick demonstration of it before we wrap the video up. That pretty much sums up for this video review. As usual, I will have a written review which goes into a bit more detail and I'll put a link to that in the information box just below. I've also put a link to our Facebook and Twitter pages where we have some information about upcoming reviews, our gaming divisions and the odd competition or two. So make sure to have a look at that. Thanks for checking out this video guys and if you enjoyed it and want to see more like it, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>